Hey guys, Tammy Trier, TrierWilderness.com. Welcome, welcome. This is video two. I was outside a little bit ago, uh, but my connection wasn't strong enough, so I don't know if you guys saw any of that or not, but I'm live again. I'm in the house here, and um, I'll show you the progress we've made since last week. So let me spin this around. Okay, um, let me see the lights on in here there we go okay good morning good morning dear Tammy okay let me step back a second here one of the things that he has been working on since last week is all the tedious stuff that goes unnoticed in some cases in example um, the caulking that gets done and and filling in of nail holes puttying and all the trim work the trim work God love him. It is just so, so tedious. Um, it is a beautiful day here. It is beautiful. So you were able to see me outside too? Because all of a sudden I came in and it just cut me off. So hopefully you were able to see some of that out there. Good morning, Charles. But that's what he's been working on. And I'm really kind of grateful that he's taking a break today and working on the rest of the railing. Um, mixing things up always helps me um, when you know you have to work on that thing that's nagging and uh, awful. Good morning, Shelly, you made it on today, awesome. Um, so, so when you're doing those things that are harder, like this piece of wood right here is notched out for every log. So you can imagine how much of a pain in the bottom that was to put in place. And that's what he's been working on most of last week and this week. It's just a, a very um, tedious process because there's lots of trim work, as you can see, top to bottom. And But it looks amazing. The bathroom is finished with the exception of the door. It does have our lovely makeshift curtain, which we are familiar with. We started out with Tyvek with the tie in the middle so that nobody would walk in. Good morning, Craig. So you guys can see that this has taken shape very nicely. Everything is um, trimmed and trimmed out. The light needs to be put in there. He did put the one behind me on the ceiling this morning. Good morning, Ashley. So you can get a glimpse. I mean, there's still stuff everywhere. We've just, that's the part that's hard during this process is in order to work in here, we have to keep covering and moving things. But here you can see how these lights worked out for us. These are just so fabulous. 16 bucks a piece. And this is how it comes out of the box. And you can see that in the back it is beveled, okay? So he had to straighten this back piece, the tip of it out, so that he could convert it over here to a hanging light. So it just, it looks awesome. It's exciting, it's very bright in here. I love how he uh, did this around the switch. He's just very creative and What's really, really awesome is that all of this has been in his head for nine years. I can't imagine how good that must feel to get all of that out of his head. I mean, mine, mine would have combusted with all that in there. I mean, I keep a lot in my head too, but wow. I mean, he just does such amazing stuff. Now, this is one room. It is finished. Hallelujah. So, um, need to get that other light in there, and then that one is good. I can clean it and put some things back in order. But that is the hardest part. I mean, we look around here. Yesterday, everything in here was, was covered. He had to keep moving things. So it gets really frustrating, and I feel for him because I get that. I tried my hardest to get as much as I could out of here, but the furniture's big, and it's just, it's, we just didn't, weren't able to pull that off. But take a look at this. There's all this trim work in here. The window is trimmed out. Now, you can't see the sill in here, and I wanted to show that in the bathroom. But, I mean, it just, it's beautiful. Good morning, Angela. It just looks, whew, so finished as I walk into the scaffolding. Um, really coming together. Now, that looks awkward at the moment, but what's going to happen is this, the stucco, or the what is going to look like old plaster, is going to go up and around that, and it's um, going to look like the part of the wall. So, just... The ideas that he has and the way he makes everything come to fruition is just amazing. Now, along the wood here, and you have to understand, it's tricky because we're not dealing with um, standard lumber. 
at all. We're doing very unique things. So there is no uh, uniformity here. Good morning, Keith. Hey, how you doing? I'm glad to have you joining me. Um, so there's no uniformity on here um, to, to match the trim up with because each of these boards is unique in its own self. So it makes it very difficult to run your trim work up through there. But he's done it. He's trimmed out the access doors up there. He's trimmed out the ceiling and also on this side. So it is just, it's coming along. It's just, we're down to that tedious work and just all this junk and dirt. We have just got sawdust and dirt just gravitating all over through the house. So it is what it is. And we'll get past this, but we're just trying to keep the tunnel vision because we need to have this done by Saturday and, and then get it listed next week. And like I showed you outside, I was outside for a little bit and then got cut off. So it's a separate video, but there's just, you know, construction stuff floating around and laying around and clutter and things have piled up that it won't take super long to disperse and get rid of, but it's just, it's consuming. So we're just trying to focus on what's at hand and not focus on anything else until we have made it through Saturday. What he is working on right now will go up here on this loft from beam to post and then he has a side done post to um, the other part of the loft there. So that'll be in place next week when when I'm live and he's doing some really neat stuff there, but we'll continue on trimming things out. And then once he's done trimming things out, I need to clean and I need to declutter. I'm gonna spin this around now. Uh, you know what, before I do that, I wanna show you the windowsills and stuff. It's just, it's just so funny. Now my window is filthy, but um, it just is so, so pretty to have a sill. We've been dealing with Tyvek and and uh, spray insulation and everything. So to actually have finished walls, like I said, this bathroom just got so, so bright. So it's really amazing. But, um, and, and I'm so proud of him. We are so excited. We are so close. It's just a lot. You can see that there's a lot and there's so many aspects to it and everything is time consuming and we're both perfectionists. So let me spin this around. Okay, so I decided I'm going to work down here today. It's bright, it's cheery, and my office still looks the same, so I'm giving myself a new environment. So how are you guys today? Shelly says, wow, what progress. Glenn, you have an eye for what looks good. Yes, he does. He really, really does, and I'm so blessed by that. I'm so blessed by his abilities. I am so blessed in so many ways. I mean, he saves us so much money. Sorry, give me a second here. I need to plug that in with his talents. His talents are just out of this world. And, you know, we work on these projects together. That's what makes it fun. And we really, like I said, I posted for prayer yesterday and all of you, I love you and appreciate your prayers so much. And some of you messaged me some very amazing private messages and I love you for it. Thank you so much just for loving myself and my family the way you do, and um, just being there for us. It's really, really awesome. Um, and I posted for prayer because it's just overwhelming. And like I said, he was working on this um, trim work, and there's no uniformity to it. Good morning, Leah. And uh, it just gets... It just gets to be a struggle at times, and I am able to self-regulate myself. I am able to keep myself in a happy, positive place. It's a constant effort sometimes, especially through this, where with him, if he's out of sync, everything's out of sync. So I got to keep him in sync. So it's a process, and it's a lot of work, and we got to keep each other up and keep each other moving and, and learn how to redirect each other, you know, so I know with him that tunnel vision needs to be the key thing, you know, I don't talk about anything else that needs to get done in the house when he's doing a project. Let him finish it, let him get it done, then we talk about the other stuff. So when you learn your spouse and you learn your partner, it makes the process so much more fun and just learning how they tick, learning how you can help them, you know, I want to be his help meet 
And, you know, we have thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed this journey. Seeing this stuff take place and take shape has been um, so, so important for us. Um, that is, has been a huge motivator in, in helping us through this process. It's been almost two months now that we've been really pushing hard on this to get this wrapped up. When we are finished here this week, um, we're going to have everything cleaned up, everything neat and tidy for photos and all that good stuff for the realtor, and we are going to start tearing apart the kitchen. Um, the rest of the house is going to all these boxes that you saw floating around. They're going to end up out in our shed and be organized out there so that when the time comes and we need to pack that up, it's actually organized in a way, in a circle, so that when we start loading, everything that we don't need ends up in the back. So there's been a lot of thought that goes into every aspect of what we are working on right now. So uh, we've got some trolls joining us today. Isn't that nice? I have got to figure out how to block some of these because they're getting more distasteful every week. Mark, you can go find another place to, to occupy if you don't mind. Yo, you ain't got something nice to say, don't say it at all. Yeah, it's pretty filthy. So guys, please disregard those. Saying. If you are able to block um, these people for me because this app is not allowing me to, um, please do. Um, let me just see if I can, aha, goodbye Mark. Sorry guys, I noticed them coming in last week. They were having some things to say, but that was pretty foul. So, okay, Angela says, it's cutting out a lot. I can't stick around today taking the kids swimming. The water is probably still freezing. I would think so, but you're in a different location than we are. No worries, thank you for joining me. Sorry it's cutting out, guys. Um, never know what I'm gonna get out here. So, glad to have you joining, Angela. Have a good rest of your day. So, with everything that we've got going on, we try to be organized We've talked about this all year with our new beginnings on being organized, having a plan, having a calendar, having a schedule, being organized using Evernote. I'll tell you guys, I don't know what I would do without Evernote and Google Keep because they are keeping me in line, keeping me organized, and um, that's really the key thing. The other key thing that I talk about a lot is um, faith and perseverance. You know. There is nothing um, weak about a person who knows they need prayer. And knowing that we are calling on God to help us through this is our first angle of attack. And that, in my opinion, is the best angle of attack. You know, we are, we are giving everything we have to God right now um, to help us through this week. I know that once we get through this week, all will be... You know, things will be different, but there's a lot on our plates, a lot on our shoulders, and a lot to get done in a very short period of time. Good morning, Diana. So, you know, knowing how to proceed, how to walk through that, how to um, keep going and not let it consume you, um, not allowing outside things to consume you and... and um, just learning how to enjoy the process. That is one of the most important things. And when you feel yourself hitting that point of total overwhelm and, and you just keep pushing through in, on your own, um, I say you're setting yourself up for failure because it's just going to be grueling and a tough process. So focus your struggles to God. Give them to God. Let him have them. Let him work through them and keep moving forward. I posted something the other day on Facebook and one of the key things that we as a whole, as a community right here should be focusing on is all of our struggles are different. All of our um, personalities are different. We handle things differently. So when you're going through your struggles, 
and they're consuming you, learning to, to lean on God, learning to give them to God. But one of the key things that we need to do is have perseverance. Perseverance in hanging on to God and perseverance in our tasks and moving forward, that we are constantly moving forward and not looking back. One of the key things with our past is that our past needs to stay in the past, but our past likes to resonate to the future. How many of us deal with that? That is a constant, I think that's a constant life thing. That regardless if you've overcome things or not, your past still tries to present itself in the future. And of course, that's the enemy. So if you in the past were not someone that persevered and that you did not um, give your things to God, one of the great beauties of moving forward is that you are able to do that now. We have full ability to change not only our lives, our circumstances, but ourselves, our health, and so much more. Let me see what the messages are on here. Good morning, sweet friend Janet. I'm glad to see you on here and thank you very much for your prayers. Love you. <laughs> Diana says, we are out and about today. Not sure how my connection will hold up. Can so relate to where you are with your house. I'm praying for you, sweet friend. Thank you. Thank you greatly. You know, guys, your prayers are really huge and we can feel them. You know, um, Monday I saw it setting in right away for my man. You know, he was just very distressed and distraught right from the get-go of the day. Just And it was total overwhelm. And my mother-in-law is such a beautiful soul. And I reached out to her and I asked her for prayer. And she recruited um, my mountain man's grandmother as well. And I reached out to a couple of my friends and just said, we need prayers for peace. And I stopped and I prayed for him and I just said, you know, God, please just give him a peace like no other today. Just let it come over him and let him be able to focus solely on what he needs to get done today. And it was so crazy because my house was very disrupted it, and you could feel the tension. The dogs were congregating with me. I mean, there was just a tension and extreme overwhelm going on in my home. And all of a sudden, you could just hear how he was working and, how, and, and you know, there wasn't any disgruntled growls coming from the space he was working in. And peace had just come over him. And it's an amazing thing. We have such amazing powers that we don't give God or ourselves credit for. And that's where I'm leading into today. Um, and I know, Diana, that you can relate. And if your connection doesn't work out, no worries. Totally understand. Just always so thankful you guys join in. Um, you know, we all go through varying degrees of this. It's just different. Instead of boxes and totes, you might have um, school pressures, children pressures, um, marital pressures, relationship pressures, financial pressures. We've got a little bit of them going on, uh, more than one, but you know, we've got our financial stress in this situation, which is why we are pushing so hard to get this listed and sold because we've just got to get out of this spot. We, there's nothing we can do at this point to get us out of where we are other than to sell this. And it needs to be something that happens quickly. And I feel I'm really trusting God with that. And I really have a great peace about me that God is going to get this sold right away for us. Some of you have been sharing that you feel there will be a bidding war and we will get more than what we are asking, which would be fabulous. Um, but I'm trusting God with it. And that's the other key thing that we have to do no matter how grim and how crazy our circumstances are, is that we have to trust God for the outcome. And that wasn't something that I always did very easily or well. But like I said, our past is our past. Regardless how we handle things in the past, that does not dictate how we handle ourselves now and tomorrow. So make those decisions to change that. Um, something that I shared with you guys a couple, well, beginning of the year, it's so crazy. We're in May. How the heck did that happen? But um, is to watch the words that we say to ourselves and to watch how we think and how we speak. That is a very dominant part of my six-month healing right now. And that's why I am constantly redirecting because I have the ability to catch myself and I have the ability to see where things are happening in my body and to my body that are not actually... Um, lack of better terms, true things that are happening. It's my brain um, mistakenly going down an old path. 
So it's pretty crazy when I, I, I feel pain and I tell my body that it's really not pain and it simply goes away. So this is what I'm saying. We have powers to change things greater than you guys will ever comprehend until you r realize it. And when you realize it, the sky is the limit. We can do anything. And that is through, through Christ that we can do anything. And, and these abilities are through him. He designed our bodies in ways that we are self-healing and that we um, are designed in ways that we can call upon him for supernatural healing. So before I jump into that, I want to share something with you. Dandelions are probably popping up all over the place right now in your yard, right? I'm sure. And most of you refer to them as weeds, right? I mean, most people refer to a dandelion as a weed. Most people in the cities are spraying them to get them out of their yards. Dandelions are actually really healthy for you. They are a great diuretic. They are um, high in vitamins and they are um, useful with a lot of different conditions. They are a great tea. They are also really good to eat, the greens and the flowers. Um, so I harvest them. I dry the roots. I dry the flowers. I also dry the greens, but it's kind of hard to dry the greens because we prefer to eat them. So what I will share in the description below after this is the link to my hot bacon dressing. Now, I feel that bacon is a healthy fat. <laughs> that is one of the things I will never give up. Um, but I also do organic, non-GMO fed, grass fed, um, no nitrates or uh, nitrites in my bacon. So it is very healthy. And um, I make a sweet and sour. It's a Pennsylvania Dutch dish, which the Mountain Man and I are both Pennsylvania Dutch. We are German through and through. And uh, it is a family favorite. So I will share the recipe with you, but it is a sweet and sour dressing. It is hot and it has bacon, bit, like bacon chips in it. You, you do your regular bacon, which I bake, by the way. You can put parchment paper. I have one of the uh, Pampered Chef uh, trays and I put my parchment paper on there. I put my uh, bacon strips on there. 450 in the oven for roughly 10 to 15 minutes. Um, 20 if you want it really good and crisp and and then your bacon is done there's no grease splattered all over your kitchen there's no grease floating around the air in your kitchen and your bacon is done very simply easily and you can walk away not monitoring it so it's a beautiful beautiful thing because when uh, you're making bacon it can be a, a process especially when you make lots at a time so just a tip for you and I will share the recipe with you because if you are walking past all of those beautiful greens and not enjoying them, you're missing out on a lot of good health benefits and then you also have the great um, dressing to put on top of it. Janet says she loves dandelions. Yes, they are just amazing and I love the tea. Um, dandelion is also used to make coffee. Um, which is also really fantastic. It's a great replacement coffee and they're all over the place. So there's a lot that you can do with dandelions, um, but I will share the link for the dressing and in future posts, you'll find all the uses that I use the dandelion for because it's endless. They are just, it's an amazing thing to have on hand. That's why we dry them and uh, utilize them during the winter months. So, all right. So today's topic is natural healing and supernatural healing. And I had a great conversation with Brian Roth. Brian is one of our audience members. And I, I have great conversations with so many of you guys. We, you know, we can learn so much from each other. And just the communications, the community that we're building is just fabulous. And it just, it's just a very wholesome place. Like I said, I feel very renewed after my Wednesday lives and I hope that you guys do as well but um, you know natural healing comes from the wisdom that God has given to man um, to utilize what we have around us dandelion being a perfect example so we have natural health where we can tap into the environmental Things that are available to us. God gives has given us everything on this earth. We have stinging nettle. We have uh, fireweed. We have yarrow. There is so much floating around. I have comfrey in my yard. There is just so much around us that we can utilize and 
we need to learn that. And if you guys have been following me, you know, from the get-go, you've seen me using natural medicines a lot. But over the last three years, that's all that I have focused on because of my healing process. Lisa says, fun that you are Pennsylvania Dutch. My dad grew up speaking Pennsylvania Dutch in Ontario. Ah, funny. Yes, my, my dad spoke German and Pennsylvania Dutch until he was, I think, in second grade. And then that's all he spoke. And then he switched, they switched over. But um, yeah, it's pretty funny. There's a lot of uh, good slang and a lot of fun stories to go down on that line. But yes, we are Pennsylvania Dutch. So um, the other aspect of our healing is super, supernatural healing. And that comes from God. And I can relate to that, guys. I've shared stories with you in the past in my videos. When I was really sick before my surgery, and for th at least three years prior to my surgery, I had heat. It just felt like fire going up and down my legs. And I couldn't, I, you know, I'm a, I'm a seeker of knowledge. I'm a researcher. I will find answers. And I was seeking and seeking and couldn't find answer, answers. I recruited other people in the natural health world and natural medicine world. And they never heard of such a thing either. And I believe what it was is that my body was so overtaxed with, with toxins and, um, I have always been very in tune with my body, which is a huge, huge blessing when it comes to natural healing and um, being able to read your own body. Um, it's harder when you step out into reading other people's bodies, um, but when you can really get in touch with your own, and I have progressed to helping the mountain man and the mountain boy um, and others with different things. Um, but when you have a intuitive mind and, and relationship with your body, there's a lot you can do. And when I was um, laying in bed one night, I was getting, um, I was getting a little um, nervous in the regard that um, I didn't know if I was going to make it to my surgery. And one night I'm laying there and the heat in my body just got so intense and it started traveling. All those years it had stayed in my arms and my legs, but that night it started moving into my chest. And it really scared me. And two things came of that night. One was that I lost all my sense for fear and worry that night. And second of all, my walk with God grew very, very, very close. I, in the middle of the night, there I am with this heat traveling in my body and just fearful that that was meaning to me that, you know, my organs were shutting down. And eventually my organs were shutting down, but I asked God to remove that fire and give me that sign that I was going to make it to my surgery. And I asked him to touch my hand. My hand was hanging off the side of the bed. My hand got heavy. And that fire going up and down my legs and that was going into my chest disappeared. And that was when I realized the powers we have and the close walk that Jesus has with us and that we can all have. I was listening to a podcast this morning and the guy said, you know, we were, we were all born the same way, naked, dumb, and having the ability to learn. And it's a very true statement. <laughs> we all have the same abilities. We all have the same abilities to learn, to have a relationship with God, and to be able to learn to tap in to the abilities God has blessed us with in a healing nature. Right now, I am going through something called DNRS. You can find out more information about it below. And I am actually retraining my brain. I'm just going to briefly say that my brain was stuck in a trauma loop and I was in a constant fight and flight mode since my surgery. Therefore, uh, pains and smells and all kinds of things were extremely intensified because that loop was getting so strong. And I'm noticing today that I can talk about it a little more without getting pressure in the top of my head. So that's a good sign because um, God is definitely healing me. I have a funny to share with you. I'm glad I said that because this funny happened last Friday and I would have forgot had I not said what I said there. Um, 
through this process of my healing, I was tapping into a lot of natural healing. I was catering to my organs. My organs were very taxed, my liver, my adrenals. Um, so much had been attacked and just, and, and just um, I don't wanna say destroyed, but very much weakened by the toxins that were in my body. Heavy metals, silicone, um, mold, fungus, bacteria, it was pretty bad. So to be able to go from not being able to walk and being flat on my back, from totally being unable to pick up a small cast iron skillet to being back on my weight bench lifting 75 pounds, to uh, walking, yes, uh, Monday, I was determined to walk and I only had an hour because I had to get back to work on a client and I, I darn near ran it. I, I had to keep looking back to see where Copper was because she wasn't like her typical self right by my side and I'd have to keep making her run to catch up. So I'm progressing and I give God all the glory for that, guys. And it's because I trust him. It's because I am open to his divine implants of information. And I am a seeker of knowledge and seek him. And as a result of that, you are seeing the miraculous things that are happening as a result of it. Let me share a funny with you. I write in my journal every day. This is my new habit for the year and I'm so excited. I've made it all the way to May and I don't, haven't missed a day. I actually do extra things in it now. Um, Part of my retraining my brain is that I needed to do new things. And I've always wanted to be ambidextrous. I've always wanted to be able to write with my left hand. Um, in third grade, I broke my right arm and I had to write with my left hand for some time. But after that, my left hand is, uh, for lack of better terms, very dysfunctional. Um, it's, it has been rather useless up until now. Friday, the mountain boy and I got out and we went to basket class because there is a woman here who has doing, been doing pine needle baskets for 40 years and this is her last year and I did not want to miss out on the opportunity to learn such a skill because there are pine needles all around me. So she is teaching this skill so graciously and we've missed a lot because of building and also uh, just the weather through winter. So she asked me to do something and to place the needle in a certain place while I was stitching my basket. And I'm sitting there and I'm having the hardest time getting this needle where it's supposed to go. When I realized I was using my left hand. <laughs> and that cracks me up because you guys have no idea how retarded my left hand really is. And it's never something that just dominantly goes in there and does things. My right hand is the, is the dominant. So the fact that I looked down and had to realize that it was my left hand doing the stitching she was perplexed because she looked at me and she said, are you ambidextrous? And I said, no. And then I explained the situation. So how funny is that? We can retrain our brains, guys. We can retrain our brains to the point that it'll just take over. And that's what our brain does. Our brain takes over when it's in a negative loop and our brain takes over when it's in a positive loop. We have the ability to teach it. And is that not funny? <laughs> I saw some smiley faces go on the screen. That just totally cracked me up. And what also it did to me is gave me such incredible excitement and, and hope. Not that I needed that hope because I trust God's outcome here. But that's the kind of things that I'm supposed to look for in my healing. Some of which will be um, my symptoms coming back because of confusion and I've got to, I've got to fight that off and ward that off and I have been experiencing that. But to see that positive progression was just hysterical to me and to see that I was using my left hand and didn't even realize it was even funnier. And, and the greater thing was I know the expression on my face was very dumbfounded based on Pat's look at me and asking if I was ambidextrous. So that is a perfect example of how we can heal ourselves and how we can make positive changes in our life. You know, regardless what our walk of life is, the podcast I was listening to this morning was Les Brown and he's got a really awesome story. Um, he came from poverty. He doesn't know who his parents were. Um, you know, he, if he based his whole life on where he started, he wouldn't be where he is today. He's a very powerful speaker. And uh, that's what I want to remind you guys is that we have such amazing powers within us to overcome. So when our past creeps in, you need to laugh at it and redirect it. And 
and not let it consume you. I've talked a lot about that this year. I've talked about the words we use to ourselves and you know, we wouldn't speak to others the way we speak to ourselves, correct? How many, you know, how many of you? You would never say the things to a friend that you say in your head, correct? I know that the, I know that you guys do it. I was prone to it also. I want to give you homework for next week while we continue to talk about this. I want you to pick two words that you say to yourself that are destructive and refuse to put them in your vocabulary anymore. I'm going to share what mine are because I've noticed through this process that I started saying something different and that might be a result of my past creeping in. That might be a result of uh, reprocessing through this trauma loop. But I say sorry a lot. And you want to know why I say I'm sorry? Because when I was growing up and I, when I was brought up, everything I did was wrong in the eyes of the beholders. And those that were around me 24-7. I was useless. And there wasn't anything that was going to be constructive that would come out of me. And I did everything wrong. And I find that I apologize. I, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to point out what I chose to do for myself. I am going to apologize to someone when I have wrongfully done something and when I have hurt somebody, I will apologize instantly. But the word sorry is no longer part of my vocabulary because I am, I have great worth. I have great abilities regardless that someone else can't see them. Okay. So that word's gone. The other word that is gone is I don't care. I don't know where that has come from. I don't ever recall using that term before, but when I've been getting frustrated with things during this process of we're building, I'm supposed to be stress-free by the way. <laughs> oh. Anyway, as I'm retraining my brain and going through this process, the words I don't care come up and it's when I'm angered that I don't care, but I do care and I care enough that I am going to change my focus to, um, cause, cause I care because whatever it is that I'm saying, I don't care about. It's something that I either want to get past or, um, be bigger than whatever it is. So those are the words I'm not saying anymore. And I guarantee that if you pay attention, there are two words that you can choose this week that you will no longer add or keep in your vocabulary. Like I said, I will be the first to apologize because um, that's a heart thing for me. I don't ever want to hurt anybody. I don't ever want to leave anybody in disarray as a result of something that I said or did. So I will apologize, but I'm no longer sorry and I do care. So Janet says you are important. You are loved. You are a blessing. You are valued. Thank you. And truth and right back at you and all of you. That's the thing. We need to realize that. <laughs> Shelly says stress free. What is that? Exactly. Oh, I use both of those a lot. Yes, Tammy. So see, gone. Get them gone. They, they are not valuable words. And, and you know what? Many of us have had similar upbringings or relatively where they paralleled. And you know what? Um, we have great power to be bigger than all of that. So remember that. You know, you are bigger and better than so much. And I use sorry a lot also. Yes, it's just not sure why, where that comes from, but I don't like it and I have chosen to remove that. And I do know where it stemmed from and that is somewhere where I'm not going back to either. So, but I want to, I know that I have this in here. Let me just, I'll locate it while I am chatting here with you guys. But we need to move past that stuff and we need to um, be bigger than our circumstances, have get great trust in the outcome and pull into our natural and our supernatural healing powers. Now I'm going to share something else with you in that regard because that's what today was about. But all of this pertains and it all is part of our healing. It is all part of our healing. We need to be willing to see where we are that may not be uh, serving us well and move to a different place. 
And that falls into the same category of um, the supernatural healing as well. Let me just look something up here because this is important to me. Um, let me find it and then I will share it. It is on my Instagram page. Didn't think it was this far back. All right. Again, I will find it as we are talking. It's not popping out at me. But I had a hernia as a result of my illness. Um, everything was so swollen in here that stuff just had nowhere to go anymore. My organs were taxed. They were swollen. They were not functioning anymore. And I ended up with a hernia. And... That hernia was very hard because I'm used to my using my abs. I use my core for everything. Helping him, when we were building the initial home, I was hoisting two by six by twelves up on, or two by eight by twelves up onto this floor from the ground when we were building to get them up here out of the rain in place so that we could put them in place. I couldn't even pick up a tiny cast iron skillet. I couldn't shovel snow for two winters now, but this winter I kicked it in the butt. And that was through God. Because one day I just got really mad and I said, in the name of Jesus, remove this hernia. It's gone. I shoveled snow all winter. I did be careful because my abs are weak compared to before. So I've been being cautious. I've been re-strengthening my core so that I don't give myself one, but it's gone. It's gone. And it was because I said it with such conviction. I meant it and I trusted it. I also trusted that that fire would go away and that that heat would go away and that God was there with me. We have supernatural powers. It's written in the Bible. It's written in the Bible. And we have those powers. Let me just find this. This is going to drive me crazy. I know it's in here. I know it's in here. And it's words that I think we all need to hear today. I know what it is. It just popped in my head. We are not defined by someone else's inability to see our worth. And so many of us allow our past to creep in, which is where that judgment call came from initially. And we need to remove that. We are not defined by somebody else's inability to see our worth. So remember that. And be strong in that and plant your feet in that, okay? Because that is powerful, powerful words. That is something that my mother-in-law shared with me through a very difficult time. And those were very powerful, powerful words for me to hear. And she is such a godsend and a blessing. And so are you guys. And that's why I'm sharing this with you because... You need to hear this. I, I, I see, I hear, we talk, and so many of us are going through similar things, paralleling in ways. Um, our journeys are very different, but what we're walking is the same. And that's how, as a community and as brothers and sisters, how we are able to hold each other up to help carry each other, to help guide and direct each other. And it's so important. That's so funny. I just saw that pop on my screen, Brian. That's exactly what I have in front of me. <laughs> Brian says, my favorite on this is Matthew 10, 1. That verse has so many implications for those who believe. Amen. And I'm going to read it right now. And, you know, guys, there is so much power in the word. And, you know, we can't. We are all called to pick up our cross and follow him. We are also called to make disciples and to find disciples and to be disciples. And there is there is so much power in this in the word of, of the Bible and we need to hone in on that and own it and take it and and run with it. Matthew 10, 1, Jesus called his 12 disciples together and gave them authority to cast out evil spirits and to heal every kind of disease and illness. We are his disciples. We have that power. And we don't need to be afraid to use it. It doesn't make us kooky. It is the power of God. It is the power of God's word. And it is, it is 
so, so powerful, guys. I have seen the power in his word so much over the last nine years, but so much more over the last three, and even so much more in the last two months. When we choose to pull into him, to trust him, to read his word, to focus on that, when we realize that we are weakening to call on him, to give it to him, there is such incredible miracles that happen. I am a walking testament to that. My girlfriend Starry is a testament to that. So many of you are a testament to that. You have walked through some incredible trials yourself. I know many of you have. I know many of you have been healed of cancer and other illnesses and diseases. We have that ability. We have that ability to say that although a doctor may say you have cancer, we have the ability to say, I'm not claiming it. I don't believe it. And I trust otherwise. God works miracles every day from little to huge. You heard me say last week how something so small as that moose in my yard touched me greater than some of the biggest miracles he's given us. What's amazing about that is that he loves us so much that he goes to such little degrees to show us and then he goes to such huge degrees to show us. His love is immeasurable. It states that in the Bible too. And it's just so incredibly, incredibly awesome. I have to give Brian credit for today's uh, live video topic because it was through his and my conversation that this all transpired and all started. And his reference to Matthew 10.1 is huge. And you need, you know, we can meditate on these words. We can hone in on these words. If one of the other ways that I'm using my journal, as well as Evernote, is I am recording every Bible verse that resonates to me this year. I, there's so many. If you could see my Bible.com app, there's little that's not highlighted anymore. The more we are in the word and the more we truly trust the outcome. And yes, this week was beginning to be very sucky. It really was very heavy and very overwhelming. Not make us weak. It makes us strong. Because we know, I know when I ask my prayer warriors for prayer, that they are lifting me. And it's coming from their hearts, just as when I lift them. There is so much power in prayer. It also states in the Bible that when two or three gather together, he is present. And, you know, building our community that I'm building, that we're building, I'm just the vessel. We are the community. We are God's people. I feel blessed that this is my calling. I feel blessed that he is using me as a vessel, but we all are valued. It's not just me. And I want to see our community grow. If you're not part of our week-long community, you can go to treyerwilderness.com slash community and join us there. That is a place where we can go and join together and not have to worry about trolls having very foul and nasty things to say or non-believers coming in and having their things to say. This is a community where we can lift and love on each other and, and be there to help each other and share. I love to hear you. I love it when you guys share your celebrations. I love it when you share your struggles. We're in this together. Good morning, George. And Shelly has a great celebration. Shelly's house has been upside down much longer than mine, and she's finally got her kitchen back. So I am praising God for her for that because I know what it's like having things in disarray, especially when you're an organized person and especially as a woman and the, and the homemaker that you want your house to be presentable and you don't like dirt all over. I mean, it's just everywhere. There is sawdust in everything. And you know what? It's part of the process. So you got to look past that. 
but it is a great celebration point when you can clean all that up and have uniformity, have all everything in place and together. But you know what? We're not in a perfect world and we gotta learn to take each day as it comes, sometimes one step at a time, and sometimes you just need to have tunnel vision and not be looking at everything that's screaming your name and wanting your attention and needing your help. You need to focus on what's ahead of you, what's right in front of you, I mean, and that you're not, um, I mean, it's easy to just feel like you're, your chest is heavy and you're starting to have heart palpitations when there's so much. So learn, and, and I know you guys go through that. I know you guys go through that. Stress is an evil, evil thing from the enemy. And we have the ability to fine tune that and to learn to direct our days. <laughs> Brian said, ha ha, it's good, filler. How you making out? Yeah. He's working with one of his superpowers today. Welding and blacksmithing. Among all the many that he has. <laughs> so guys. Chat on her? Not yet. I don't think so. Nope. Brian is from Florida. Hey, Brian. And George. Hey, George. Hey, George. And Keith Montgomery from Windmill hey, Outfitters. Got so many. Tammy hey. and Kelly. There's a lot today. Everybody else. Right? <laughs> There's a lot today, which I'm not is. I'm gonna stand here and name names all day long. No, well, you were doing pretty good. <laughs> Have a good one. <laughs> so we will be sure to show you all the progress that goes on this week. There is a lot yet to be done. We will do it. We work good under pressure. We work good together. Just a lot, and it it can be consuming, and we are under the gun. Plus, there's so many other things that need to get taken care of. Okay, I must be missing some of the comments because I'm getting bits and pieces in comments. So I'll look back on those. Oh, thank you, Brian. Um, so, guys, we really do have such great abilities. And there are so much, you know, there's a lot of people that are heavily focused on the medical system. Big pharma, um, big medicine. Uh, there is a place, a time and a place for that. I, I am a total believer in that. You know, I, I wouldn't be here today if it wouldn't have been for my surgery. However, there is a lot we can do for ourselves with natural medicines. And a lot of times people um, push off the natural medicines because when they first appeared and in, in our culture here in the United States. Others have been using it forever, but um, when it became very prevalent in the United States, it was in the 60s and 70s, and a lot of people attributed um, the hippie movement and correlated the hippie movement to the natural medicine movement. And yes, uh, part because they had a more open mind and uh, we're willing to use and try things. And I want to encourage you to learn more about natural medicines because if things were ever to fall apart, we would have, there would be no big pharma and there would be no big medicine available any longer. It would be in small doses and it would be by um, few doctors that were left but natural medicine has been around for forever. God put it on the planet when he created it in the first seven days. And there, what's really unique is that where a poisonous plant is planted or growing, feet away from it is the, um, just went blank, the cure. Okay, for that poisonous plant. Things are designed and, and, and were created with intention and purpose. And the more we learn and the more we delve into that and the more we delve into how we can help ourselves 
and improve on ourselves and um, heal ourselves, the much greater opportunities we have in the future if things were to fall apart. And this is something I've been involved in since I'm 14, and it's something that I am constantly delving into. Um, it's something that saved my life over the last three years. But what's even more amazing is the supernatural healing powers that we have and that God has granted us with and that is available to each and every one of us. So I hope you gain something from this. I hope you are receptive to this because um, in a preparedness, self-reliant aspect, these are things we can do for ourselves to help us and our families. Um, and you know, when, when we were talking about praying before too, there is so much power in prayer and God hears and welcomes our prayers. That is communication with him. That relationship is something that we need to want, not feel that we have to have. And when you decide that you want it and you start tapping into that because of a desire and a need you feel inside, that, crave, that becomes a craving and that relationship becomes so much stronger and so much more valuable both to you and to God because you become a vessel for him. So just my thoughts on things today. Here are some other things that I want to share with you in the natural aspect of things and then um, I will be jumping off of here before too long. C.S. Lewis wrote, the sun looks down on nothing half so good as a household laughing together over a meal. That's something that is far and few between today too. Um, but laughter and humor and smiling has great power. One of the things I have to do in my retraining my brain is that when something from the past pops up and um, I, I need to be very aware of what's going on in my head and around me. And when I notice that, I need to smile and, and redirect it. And it's amazing how quickly that smile dissipates things. Um, I mean, I'm prone to smile anyway, and it even makes me laugh now when I have to smile. But um, there's so much power in that. And I know many of you can attest to that. I saw Ashley on here. I know Ashley can attest to that. The wisdom of fostering a joyful heart is found in Proverbs 17:22, where we read, A cheerful heart is good medicine, but a crushed spirit dries up the bones. So very true. The proverb offers a prescription, if you will, to stimulate health and healing, allowing joy to fill our hearts, a medicine that costs little but yields great results. I will share these later. You need to remember that. You know, right there is a form of natural healing, supernatural healing too, as it's coming from the word. So it's a little bit of both. But it's powerful and it's something that we can simply do. We can do for each other. And there's nothing more powerful to me than sitting in a situation where you are in an extreme gut laugh, tears rolling down your face. It changes everything. And that is something that the mountain man and I have been focusing on for the last two months through this journey to keep ourselves straight. So if it required playing 80s music and, and laughing hysterically, that's what we did. Um, so, and, and going down memory lane, not stepping into the past, just going down memory lane. So, laughter among family and friends can create a safe place where we both know and feel that we're loved. That's the purpose of our Facebook Lives. That's the purpose of my home, is to give that feeling to people, a comfort spot. Regardless of if there's scaffolding in my home or not, that is what I want to, I want permeating from my home, is a safe haven. A place where there's love and laughter. That place of love and laughter heals. It heals hearts. It heals illnesses. It heals broken hearts. It heals um, past, past things that are popping up. Do you need to incorporate more laughter into your life as good medicine for your spirit? Hmm. That's a question to think about for you also this week. So you have two words to choose that you're going to remove from your thoughts and your vocabulary. What are they going to be? The other thing is, do you need to incorporate good medicine into your life? Do you notice, have you noticed, have you tried it, that when things are sour in your home as a result of chaos, as a result of struggles, have you ever sat down and put on, we, we've turned on um, Tim Hawkins, 
good Christian comedian and just sat there and laughed for a half an hour or 15 minutes or whatever it took or put on one of his spoof video, uh, videos where he's spoofing a song and has created his own words. You know, 15 minutes like that can change the whole aspect and tension in your home. Walking five miles at a very fast clip can do the same and added great humor when my dog could not keep up with me. Whatever it takes, guys, we have control and we need to learn to incorporate these life-changing, life-altering skills into our home. And how silly is it that it's something as simple as laughter? It's easy to do. We can all do it. There are lots of prayer requests down below. If you need prayers this week, please do not hesitate to ask. If your situation is something you don't want um, the world to know, you don't need to share details. You just need to request prayer. We are happy to pray for you in all of us. I have the, Everybody joining me today are incredible, incredible prayer warriors. So... Oh, awesome. Brian said, I would also recommend Brad Stein put a helmet on. Is that, um, I was saying about the uh, comedian, is that what that is also, or is that a book? Good books are another great way to escape. I was reading a great book this week to try to take my mind off of things, and I was also doing a lot of reading in the Bible. But if you guys need prayer, please do not hesitate to ask for prayer. Um, Martin is still in his coma. But you know, I think one of the reasons that Martin is healing so well in his coma and is reacting to stimuli and, and really, he is a miracle right now. They don't understand all that's happening while he's in this coma. You know, his family of seven children and his wife come into that room and they are loving God, they are trusting God, and, and there is a lot of love and laughter. I believe it. I believe that that is why miracles are happening right there in that family. I am so blessed. Thank you, Diana, for introducing me to Kim. That is Martin's wife. Oh my goodness. What a faithful woman. I just, you know, we need to surround ourselves with people that build us, that make us better people. And man, she's one of them, as are all of you. But I am, I, uh, she, she wows me in her circumstances right now. And it's neat to be around people that are going through such incredible times and are just wowing the socks off of people. It's pretty amazing. Um, you know, and that's because of Jesus and because of their love for him. So um, as in regard to my healing and all that I've been doing, uh, you can find the links below. You can also find the links below to all the apps that are keeping us organized here on the homestead. Stein is a comedian and it is online or on DVD. Awesome. I will check it out. I'm always open to new materials. I love listening to a podcast. It is Sean Croxton. Um, it is his, uh, gosh, I just went blank. It is a motivation. I'll put a link in it, uh, the description later, but his stuff is just amazing. So I encourage you to listen to that. Listen to positive things listening to growth uh, and knowledge uh, podcasts and YouTubes and, and comedy and, and just finding ways to laugh as a family. Oh my goodness, it's such a healing thing. We have spent so much time over the last two months laughing. We are just very weighted. We were very weighted this week. I am feeling refreshed now. I know he is feeling refreshed, so God is answering prayer. Um, I'd like to also ask that you uh, lift Todd, the SSL family dad on YouTube. His boar attacked him and sliced open a 12-inch gash on the back of his leg at his knee somewhere. I haven't gotten more details yet, but um, they had to reattach his hamstring. So it was pretty, it was, it was not a pretty thing. Just go there. Um, so keep them in your prayers, he and his family, um, they are a working homestead. He uh, also is the um, person that has been, um, that I've been sharing on Sundays with the uh, sermons. He is the one that has been doing the sermons. A uh, very good man of God, family of God. So keep them in your prayers. Joshua is Kim and Martin's son. Uh, Martin is the one in the coma. He is 13 
and he has stepped up to the plate being the man of the household and uh, Kim just asked for extra prayers for him so keep him in prayer and a friend of mine Starry could use some great prayers uh, for warding off the enemy who is striking heavily because she is a vessel and a warrior for God and as we take on that role the enemy tries to find little footholds so keep her in your prayers also prayers for healing for her and she will be hitting the road soon with her ministry so that is really awesome and JC and Lori um, could use some prayers also I encourage you to check them out that is the boss of the swamp on YouTube um, they have a great off-grid channel, really down-to-earth people, really awesome, awesome people. He is going through some health struggles. Um, I feel really uh, in line with him. He and I have, and the mountain man, have the same thought process on so much of life. And uh, just really, really good people. He is dealing with some cancer and other health issues, so keep them in prayers. So thankful for a family business. A lot of fun and laughs together. Yeah, exactly, Craig. Craig, you can check out. He is uh, Craig Peterman. It's Peterman Upholstery. You can find them on Facebook and on Instagram. And they do fabulous, fabulous work. And um, good Christian family there as well. And uh, yeah, you know, when you work together, a family that can laugh together you know, we have been home based for so much of our nine year journey here. And even when he was um, doing construction on the road, many, majority of those jobs I was on site with him as well was the mountain boy and mountain Ben. Mountain Ben was helping him. So, you know, when you can enjoy life and find humor in the silliest things and sing songs with new words and do all kinds of stuff like that, I'm sure you do that there too. It's just, I don't know, it's just something that we all end up doing in one way or another, right? So, I had posted this the other week on our channel, on Facebook, and I believe on the uh, Facebook Live, but new beginnings and new normal, and I like that the normal's upside down, inspiring positive change, and you know guys, what is normal, and my theory in life is if you can't laugh and you can't have fun, then why are you living? Life is meant to be lived. And although we are going through one heck of a struggle right now with a lot of pressure, you see us embracing it, knowing that at times we need prayer and living it out with trusting God and, and learning to Put things in our lives and things in place that will help us to be better people, live better, and live happier. You know, we are, like I said, life is meant to be lived and it is what we make it. That is a choice always. So no matter what you're going through, no matter what your past was, it's your past. Make today and tomorrow and every day following different. We have that choice. We have that ability and we have the ability to be very in tune with ourselves, whether it's an intuitive nature with our, our health or whether it is just being in tune with what we are doing, what we are saying, what we are speaking, how we are living. You know, we have all those choices. So delve into God's word. Choose your two words that you're going to get rid of this from now on. They will be removed from your vocabulary and your thoughts. And... Just find more humor. Make life the happy place it's supposed to be. Instead of focusing on what society thinks we should with all the negativity and, you know, running life by terms that somebody set up a long time ago that we don't have to live by. You know, new beginnings, new normal. Make it your new normal and what works for you. So if you need prayer, please leave it in the comments below. If you are watching this after the fact, leave your comments below. I will be back on next Wednesday, 1030 Pacific Standard Time to show you the new updates and the place being a little more in order and progressing forward with the sale of our off-grid homestead. So we could use your prayers on that for a quick sale. Or if you know somebody, certainly have them reach out to us at survive at treyourwilderness.com. I'm going to say a prayer for us all. Papa, I just thank you for these people that are present and those that are watching the replay. 
And I just thank you for each and every one of them. They've blessed our lives in such tremendous ways. They add to our day to day. And I want to thank Brian for uh, inspiring this today and all his prayers as well as everybody else's. We have such an amazing community that is forming with you, Papa, in the forefront. And it's just amazing. It's amazing to see the growth. It's amazing to see how we all are able to help one another. And that's what we are called to do. Your word is so powerful. And like Brian mentioned, Matthew 10:1. We are given such amazing powers through your word and through your creation. There is so much available to us to heal ourselves, our families. And we, we don't put the power to those words and give credit to those words with such power like we should. I just ask that you be with everyone today. Lift their spirits. Wrap your arms around them. Have, help them to... Keep the past in the past and help them to redirect the past when it pops up. Remind them that they are good, powerful, strong people and that we are not defined, not even in the slightest, by someone else's inability to see our worth. We need to remember what you see as our worth and that you see great worth in each and every one of us more than anybody will ever. And you see perfection. And we need to remember that. And just help us to be more kind to ourselves. Help us to learn to tap into your word and, and use your word as it strongly enables us to. And just be with all those on our prayer list. Be with Pat Kenny as he is dealing with allergies and heart issues and as he's working through his cancer. And be with Martin and his family and be with Joshua as he's taking on such a strong role for a 13-year-old. And just continue to give Kim strength to be a light in her dark walk right now and in her struggle and just be with Starry and with JC and Lori and just be with everyone here be with Chad continue to lift him and and thank you for the miracles that you've worked in our community through the power of our prayer and Papa I just thank you for what you're gonna do in each and every one of our lives I know that your plan for each of us I trust that plan, and I know that it's going to be bigger and better than anything we could have ever imagined. So thank you for what you're doing in each of our lives, and what more so what you're going to do. And I just ask all of this in your holy and precious name of Jesus. Amen. Okay, guys. Thank you for joining me. You know, I, I try to tap these back down to a half an hour, and it's almost impossible. God is talking through me and sharing and sharing through each of you. And um, I thank you guys for joining me for such a lengthy amount of time. And for those of you watching the replays, so much good stuff being shared. And God is good all the time. Remember that. And just uh, whatever you're walking out, whatever struggle you may be encountering, just remember to give it to God. Uh, recruit your prayer warriors. We all, need, we all need a community of believers around us. That is so powerful. Um, there is nothing worse than being surrounded by naysayers and by those that aren't cheering us on. And if you don't have that in your community directly, you've got that in us. So don't ever hesitate to reach out, private message, email, uh, commenting, whatever. You know how to find us and, and we, are, we are here. We will answer your messages. So, guys, I love you all. I thank you. I wish you a good rest of your week. We've got this. We are going to get it done. And we will be back on next Wednesday celebrating that. So, guys, take care. Have a great day. Have a great rest of your week. And God bless. Thank you, too, Brian. God bless.